The basic science researchers in the Bay Area Breast Cancer and the Environment Research Center are asking whether cells in the breast during puberty might be especially sensitive to environmental toxins. Focus as uh, my research has been um, how radiation acts as a carcinogen in breast. Uh, specifically, what we were interested in is the epidemiological observation that exposure to radiation during puberty confers the greatest risk of developing cancer much, much later in life. So when we began the project, the question, well, what is unique about puberty? Now, the unique aspect of the mammary gland is that it develops after birth. That means that the tissue is present as a little sprout. And then under the hormones of puberty, it develops into a full-grown tree. There is a unique window in puberty that because what occurs is not so much the growth of the tree, but rather laying down the, the um, cells that can actually um, have the longest lives. Those are those, the stem cells of the mammary gland. So during puberty, those cells actually are produced, um, making it a unique window. You develop uh, the breast postnatally in the pubertal uh, girl, and then you change it again with pregnancy and lactation, and then you go back to, to the ground state with involution after you finish lactating. If you're looking at these proteases which modify the uh, microenvironment of cells, then looking at breast development and uh, the functions of breast is really the example where you can figure out what these enzymes are doing. And then we've gone from there to really trying to understand how those processes are similar or different from what happens in cancer. Are these just slightly misregulated examples of normal development? Or is it really a very different process? So if you understand the normal, you can understand the abnormal. And where we want to go from that there is to ask whether things like chemicals in the environment and other environmental agents are perturbing this process. In our body of the trillions of cells, at any given time, there are at least a few cells that have mutations that are, are commensurate with, with cancer, but they're not expressed. You don't have a cancer. So what we think is that there are things in the environment that allow these cells with these mutations, these aberrations, to go ahead and express themselves. That may be the critical point at which detection is possible and prevention is possible. One of the initial objectives of the a BSERC program was to provide an outlet for this into the public, into the community sphere. Zero Breast Cancer has provided that outlet and they've really stimulated us, to, stimulated us to think about how the research that we are doing can be used for people to understand the basis of breast cancer risk. It's been very valuable for us to interact so that we can translate our work better but it's also been a bit of a surprise to me that in getting that information back, we've changed some of the things we do too. And I think we've become uh, much more aware of how valuable this feedback really is. What we try to do in the breast biologues is to uh, break the jargon down and explain in the simplest terms that even my 14-year-old daughter could understand. I think we have been successful in getting across what it is that we do, and, and uh, I think the message has been fairly well received. Zero Breast Cancer has really been an advocate for the science, and I think that's been um, a really rewarding experience. To me, it's kind of an accolade that says that, uh, yes, people think what I'm doing, uh, that first of all, they have some understanding, and second of all, they, they appreciate it. I guess I feel that I was doing what I should do to try to communicate our science to the community, and so to be recognized as, uh, by this special award means that uh, what we were doing, maybe we were doing something right. <laughs>